So moving on to Mulan, how did you find out that you got a part in the film? Uh, I found out when my manager called me and told me that you got it. Uh, so <laughs> it was very normal. It was probably the most normal audition process I've ever been on. Maybe because it was such a high level movie that it was very standard. I went in, I got the audition call for it. Uh, I went in, I read the, the sides and the scene with the casting director and one of her assistants. And I left. Two, two months later, I got called back for a callback and I went back in and it was the casting director, her assistant, and then the director of the movie as well as one of the executive producers. I read the scene again, did it twice and left. And then two months later, I got the call and was like, hey, you got the part. I was like, amazing. So yeah. it was a long process. And I think because it took so long, usually callbacks and auditions happen much faster. It's like within a week or within the month. Because it took so long, I didn't have any expectations for it. So when it finally came around, I was very relieved. But had I not gotten it, I think I also would have been fine. Just because I, at that point, it was sort of like a way, it was not in my memory. Because mm -hmm. it was, you know, been such a long time since I had, I had auditions. Mm -hmm. So how did you prepare for the audition or how did you prepare for the role? Same way I prepare for most stuff, which is first things first, memorize the lines. And try to memorize it method in... Method acting. Yeah, method. <laughs> uh, the the way I like to memorize lines is to just memorize the words as like robotic as possible, almost like you are Spock or a an android reading it, so that you just know the words. You're not putting any emphasis on anything by accident. You're not imbuing certain sentences with like an emotion that may not be right. Mm -hmm. And then once you have all the words set, you can go to town working on it. So figuring out, okay, what do I, you know, when the scene starts, where am I? How do I feel? Um, what is my character? Why am I saying these things? Asking yourselves all those questions and just working through it bit by bit, trying to see it holistically from the whole scene as a whole. And this was a very simple scene. It was, it was, I only had, I think, four or five lines in it, mm -hmm. but there are a lot of reactions. And in the case of reactions, it's really hard to react to something when you're just reading the thing and being like, so-and-so says this, everyone laughs. So it's like, okay. <laughs> when you're reading it to yourself, it's hard to react as like, trying to put yourself in someone else's character's voice, saying it, and then laughing at it. So if anything, you have to just sort of figure out who you are as the character the whole time so that when it comes up and you know that, okay, in the scene, I'm supposed to laugh here, you're not actually thinking about how, like, you read the line or before how you thought it was supposed to come off. You just know you're supposed to laugh around this time, and when you're reading it with, like, someone in the room, that stuff will come out more naturally. So like overthinking things is like really bad too, I think in auditions. Mm -hmm. So that was my process as it is with all of them. Um, I remember wearing a green long sleeve shirt uh, and I <laughs> rolled it up. I remember I hadn't shaved for two days because I thought that was, uh, you know, if we were in the army uh, as this character <laughs> and we were out to war, I wouldn't have time to shave. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, I'll come in looking a little different. Uh, and that was basically it. And then when I went in for the callback, I wore the exact same thing, did the, the everything oh, the wow. exact same. Yeah. I, I mean, they usually recommend you do that. I don't okay. think it really matters. I think it would be different if like you went in for the first audition wearing a green shirt and the second one you're wearing pink or something, right? Like that probably wouldn't be good. Uh, because for, at that point, the only thing that the director had seen would have been my tape. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to like throw them off their initial feeling or whatever it is. But that was it. It was very not stressful, to be honest. And I went in, did it, left, felt good about how I did it, and found out much later that I'd gotten the role. Mm -hmm. So how long was the filming process? The filming process, so I went to New Zealand last year in 2018 in June, and I left at the end of November. Okay. So that was six months total. Uh, but for the first two months was almost exclusively just spent on training. So getting our physical fitness up to speed, learning all the choreography and stuff that we had to learn for the movie. Um, and then the last four months was the actual production. So I would say I worked, I don't know, probably 60 to 70% of the days total. Um, I'm not a main character by any means. I'm a friend of Mulan's in the army. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about all I can really reveal. But we worked a lot of days and we got to hang out with the rest of the cast a lot. And it was a really great bonding experience and yeah. learning experience too, mm -hmm. to be on something that scale um, in a different country, living without your normal comforts and being so far away from your friends and your home and your family and your dog and all that stuff. Yeah, how was it meeting you know these major stars like Jet Li and yeah. Donnie Yen and Crystal Liu. 
pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> everyone was very nice. Um, I don't. I didn't really have any expectations going in. Mm -hmm. I watched Donnie on screen like hundreds of times. I feel like you know. I, I've seen every Ip Man movie like one and a half times ish, <laughs> uh, and so. It was cool to meet people that you know well from their on-screen presence. Mm -hmm. But for me, I'm not the kind of person that like gets starstruck by any means. I try to be really respectful, if anything, of people's spaces because I know, uh, as someone that occasionally gets recognized, the feeling that comes with it. And I understand that even though I'm someone that's like very chill with it generally, mm -hmm. I can understand why it's something that might you know get people a little anxious or nervous or just in general not feeling comfortable. Right. So meeting all these people, was it was like very, um, I guess the first time I met everyone, it was very like, hello, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Very mm -hmm. normal. And, and, you know, over the course of four months, you sort of get to know people slowly a little better. People open up because, right. you know, you see them every single day at some points. Uh, and so that was really nice to just sort of understand that everyone at the end of the day is very human, very normal, very nice. Mm -hmm. um, Crystal Leo, or we called her Ife, uh, Leo Ife. Um, she was, she plays the titular role of Mulan, and she is so incredibly kind and hardworking and sweet and humble and nice, great sense of humor, is a cat person, not a dog person. I'm a cat person as well. Oh, okay, well, there you go. You guys share something in common. Um, it was really, really nice to work with her, uh, just because, you know, we do have a lot more, I'd say, of all the main characters, we have the most scenes with her, because obviously we're in the army with her. Right. So it was really awesome to be, you know, just around someone that had that much experience and had done so many different movies uh, in China growing up and had extensive martial arts experience. Mm -hmm. And watching her do some of the choreography and stuff uh, in person was really awesome and impressive. And also just like you learn a lot watching people that have had everything mm -hmm. and are kind of spoiled rotten because of it and right. treat people differently. And then you see people on the other end, which is definitely where Ife is, which is they have had everything and they appreciate it. And they, they appreciate the kindness and generosity of the people that are helping them. Uh, and they in turn give that back to the crew, the, the cast, and the whole atmosphere of the set. And I think she did a really wonderful job, both doing an incredibly physically taxing role, mm -hmm. you know, doing a lot of different things as Mulan, obviously, mm -hmm. uh, and still keeping a composure that was very calm and humble and respectful of the environment. And at the end of the day, you know, focused and driven and working hard on what they're trying to do, which is bring this character to life. Mm -hmm. So seeing that on that level was really nice, especially when, you know, it would be cold and I'd be like, I'm cold, this sucks. <laughs> and you'd be like, bro, you are living the dream, you know, and yeah. this is the first time we've ever done something this big. How do you think someone that has done 50 of these before feels, right? How are they treating it? So it was to learn through that experience, I think, was really valuable, too. Um, and everyone in New Zealand super nice. So that was a great part of it, too. Is we were surrounded by kind people in general. Yeah. Um, and that helped, you know, keep you sane in the long nights. So um, I know you probably can't tell us much, but mm -hmm. how is Mulan the same as other Disney princess films uh -huh. live action? And how is it a bit different? So I've only seen a few of the live action remakes of the Disney films, but I would say Mulan is probably one of the most unique and different, just in that the core essence of what the movie is, is that it's a movie about a war, right? Like it's a movie about people that need to train to go to war and fight off an evil invading force of sorts. Um, and you know, if you look at every other Disney movie, there, not many movies are about that. They're usually about more smaller struggles, like an evil witch takes over a thing, and or uh, you know, there's a, I don't know. You, you can go down the list, right? right. It, it's it's usually focused on. I mean, the, I'd say the core concept of most Disney movies is very similar. You have a hero, heroine, and those are interchangeable, um, and you have a villain, and there's usually a parent of the hero or heroine. And there's usually a mom, and then there's like a cast of colorful characters that surround them that help them get from point A to point B. Right. Um, so I'd say Mulan obviously fits within that mold, but you know, Mulan is not your normal princess in that she wields a sword. She is a badass warrior. She has, you know, as far as skill and all that stuff is concerned, she is at the exact same level as the other soldiers in the army. Mm -hmm. um, I think Mulan is really important for a lot of young girls and guys growing up too, just because it does break the princess norm. Mm -hmm. um, and I think Disney's doing a really good job in terms of changing up what it used to be in the traditional animation days 
and bringing you know really awesome fresh new characters and strong female characters to the forefront. Mm -hmm. So we have Moana, you have Elsa, and all of Frozen, and Mulan. I think is right up there, as well as an, as as a princess that isn't. I, I wouldn't even call Mulan a princess in a lot of ways because. That's a very Western term, and the big thing about Mulan that I think has resonated with so many people is that this is a traditionally Chinese story. It is an Asian movie, um, and Disney really went to a lot of lengths to make sure that the casting was representative of that as well in this remake of it. And the cast list you can look it up online has filled is filled with a lot of amazing, amazing people that have also been a big part of Asian American cinema as well as Asian cinema in China and all that. So. Jason Scott Lee, who played Bruce Lee in the in Enter the Dragon, not Enter the Dragon, in Dragon, yeah, Dragon, the Bruce Lee story. Jason Scott Lee, amazing actor. Ron Yuan, like all these guys have been around the block, and they, you know, they understand what it was like to be. I thought it was hard coming here in 2011. Like, imagine how different that hard it was to been in the 80s and 90s in Hollywood. So, I think that's a huge part of why Mulan resonates with so many people. Is that this, you know, you really don't have a story that is so culturally different and set in a different world. It's not something that happens that often in movies in general for Hollywood, right? I mean, we do get a lot of diverse stories and stuff out there. But as far as Asian stories go, I, I would say that we're definitely one of the most underrepresented groups. And so a movie like Mulan, at the scale it is from a studio like Disney, and it's going to be as big as it is, I think it's going to be a huge turning point for a lot of people watching cinema um, and for people around the world because Hollywood is sort of still the premier destination for entertainment and movies. Mm -hmm. And it's going to have a big resonating impact. And Mulan being a strong princess that is, you know, courageous fights with the best of them, is the savior of China and all that stuff. And that's awesome. A big thanks to Hotel Indigo and 18 Social for hosting this venue for us. If you want more information about hosting an event here, please click on the link in the description below. And if you want to, please go ahead and like us on Facebook or subscribe to our newsletter at apex.org. Thanks for watching.